Zata and Kanafa for you. Today we're making two of my favorite things that exemplify Arab hospitality. The manoushe and then knafe. I'm excited to learn from you. It's really an honor and a privilege. Thanks for joining us. And could you, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, why don't you take the lead and we'll just kind of chat throughout. We're going to yes. start with our mana'ish. This is the ultimate Arab way of cooking is the multitasking. Uh, we're going to start with our dough for our mana'ish and then we're going to move on to work on our crusts and set up our knafe and then go back to our mana'ish. Um, so we're going to start by um, mixing our two and a half cups of our liquid and get my measuring. We weigh everything in Baker's World, but most home cooks uh, do not have um, scales, but I really recommend it if you have a scale. Um, it's 566 grams for those who are like want bonus points. What, what, do, what do our mothers say? Like a mug and a half, yeah. you know, kamshe. <laughs> It's always kamche shwaye. And then, Aati mama, inta lazim. Kamche shwaye, you know. There needs to be ihsas, but I'm like, mama, I want like measurements. <laughs> I don't want you to tell me that there needs to be ihsas. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to use, I'm going to mix my flour in here. It's about five and a half cups of the bread flour. Um, if you have a stand mixer, Awesome. If you don't, you're going to use just like a, a spoon. I'm going to give a mix here. And I'm just mixing it until it's incorporated. Not too much. Yeah. And it kind of look like a bloopy, shaggy, shaggy mess. Mm -hmm. So I always sort of start by getting the water and the flour together because that's what's going to mm. kind of create your gluten. And then it's just going to relax, basically, while we're measuring our other ingredients. We'll do about a fourth cup of the warm water, and we're going to bloom our yeast. Mm -hmm. um, so when I, when I refer to yeast in my recipe, uh, I use active dry yeast. If you have instant yeast at home, you can do it. You don't need to do this process. You can, like actually throw the yeast with the other ingredients because it's instant um, <laughs> and you can use half the amount. We <laughs> use about a tablespoon of yeast in here. Throw it into my fourth. And I'm just putting it in a bigger vessel. Oh, it smells nice and yeasty. <laughs> and then I'm going to feed it a little bit with uh, sugar. So yeast loves sugar. That's kind of like what activates it. In fact, it sort of flour, what it does is basically break the proteins down into sugar and then sort of fiend off of it. And then as a byproduct, you get that um, carbon dioxide, which makes a nice bubbles in the yeast. Add a little bit of um, sweetness to your dough. Cool. Yeah. I'll use a little sweetness. So while this is blooming, I'm going to add the rest of my ingredients to this shaggy dough. As you can kind of see, just by sitting for like 10 minutes, it's it's quite incorporated without me having to mix it at all. It's kind of amazing. Science is amazing how it's like literally kneading just through the chemistry of it. Um, so I'm going to put uh, salt. I love that I'm learning the science of bread making. Yes. <laughs> my mom my mom is a biochemist, so I think I get it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I get it. That's amazing. You're like, this is inhibiting this. And this is this inhibiting is... this. <laughs> it's yeah. great, though. It's cool because it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it's like alchemy. <laughs> That's why our people are so good at it, right? We're the original bread makers. And... True that. We definitely, there was rhyme and rhythm to why we were doing things while we were, how we were doing them. Of course. I will. Um, okay, so I'm going to add, so I added the salt. I'm going to add about a cup of my all-purpose flour. And if you don't have a paddle mixer, you can kind of 
throw these things in and create a well to put sort of the rest of your liquids. But because I have a handy dandy mixer, mm -hmm. it's going to do it all for me. Um, my yeast is nice and bubbly. It smells glorious. It's alive. Really what you're doing, this, this act of blooming it, you're active, you're activating it, but you're also making sure it's alive. Because if your yeast has just been sitting on your shelf for a long time, it's not necessarily guaranteed. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw the rest of this yeast mixture in there. And then I am going to do about a fourth cup of olive oil. And then once they're incorporated, you're going to switch to a hook if you're using a mixture. I'm going to do a little mix of both so people can see how I knead the dough okay. as well. Let's see if I can actually use my hands. I'm going to use the hook for a second. That's looking good. I'm going to take this out. This is the consistency it should look like in the beginning. Got it. You can see it's like a nice shaggy dough. Um, and I use kind of the pinchy pinchy method to kind of get everything incorporated. Mm-hmm. Between the knuckles, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, between my like, yeah, my knuckles are like what's showing. Um, yeah. It's really like between my thumb and my uh, Got it. my index finger. Okay, and then we're just gonna need some people do this in a big bowl. But it's basically you're taking the dough and you're pulling it over, and then you're pushing it out. It's like a and nice. then you're rotating, so you're just Push, pull, pull, push, turn. There we go. Pull, push, turn. <laughs> and then if you really want to get get into it, roll your sleeves yep. up. Well, I'll yeah. just I'll pretend, get those muscles like, working. <laughs> I'll be doing um, it with you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm looking gonna, the part, but I'm I'm faking yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> so that's the first thing I'm looking for as I need this dough is sort of the texture on the outside. Um, the other thing I'm looking for is elasticity. So when I'm pushing down, is it springing up? It's sort of, you can still see the yeah. end. So that for me, that means I need to keep kneading. And um, I put the oil on the side so that it has space to rise up. I'm going to slather it with just a little bit more oil because why not oils? Cause why not exactly? <laughs> <laughs> and then we can cover it with a towel or saran wrap. And then we're going to let that baby do its thing. You'll need a food processor. I recommend for the canapé recipe. Um, okay. We're going to go, we're going to make the crust. The main ingredients of the canapé shredded phyllo. That's one of the main ingredients for the crust. Um, they come in packets. They're usually frozen. Um, so if you're going to make it, you want to defrost. Although you're using a food processor, so the heat of the food processor can break it up. So it's like if you forgot, just take it out and <laughs> chop it up into little pieces. Because we're not doing the like long shredded Turkish style knafe. We're mm. doing the nameh, mm. which means mm. fine in Arabic. So. I mean, this is like sort of my rule of thumb for any Arab sweet or dessert is that you always want to make your syrup ahead of time so it has enough time to cool down. Um, you never want to put hot syrup on hot pastries. So I'm going to dissolve about two cups of sugar into one cup of water. So always the ratio for our syrups are two to one. So if you want to make more, just have it on hand. I always have all that on hand. I'm whisking the sugar. Get kind of a white film. Um, I'm going to throw some lemon juice in there. So lemon juice is sort of an iconic piece of this because um, if you, sometimes the sugar tends to crystallize. So the mm -hmm. lemon, I'm telling you, our people are chemists. They know there's like a whole science <laughs> to this. It's not just for taste. Um, 
but it helps prevent it from crystallizing. So you want about one teaspoon of the lemon in there. Got it. So, um, so we're going to bring that to a boil. So while we're doing that, let me break up this crust. Let me see if I can multitask sure. here. Um, so I'm going to open my filo dough. Let's be real. If you're going to take the time to make kanafe, you're not yeah. making just a little amount, right? <laughs> no, you're feeding a village. Yeah, you're feeding everyone. Why would you just do kanafe for yourself? Yeah, this is going to pulse down to a fourth of its size. Can't really see this too much, but you can see sort of bubbles forming. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really just bringing this up to a boil. As soon as I bring it up to a boil, so it's on high heat right now. As soon as it comes up to a boil, I'm going to lower it and then let it simmer. You don't want to burn this into a caramel. Um, so then the other sort of component of this crust, besides the syrup, is the, the butter. So we use clarified butter, samne. Mm -hmm. um, and it's super easy. I mean, I have it already clarified, um, but you can get it in the store. It's called ghee. Uh, Indians use it as well. We're going to use about half a cup. So 95 grams. Um, I'm going to go back to my syrup now because it's looking nice and viscous. I have it sort of simmering. And the way you check on your syrup, you want to put a spoon in there. And if it coats the back of the spoon, it's coating the front of my spoon, not quite the back just yet. The floral elements of the altar, that's like what altar is most iconic, which is the orange blossom and the mm. rose water. I'm and all so about the orange both. blossom. You like okay, the cool. your team orange blossom? I'm team, I'm orange, team blossom orange blossom too. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that I mean, what I they like put in Ahu Beda? Yeah. Or am I wrong? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, no, yeah, I think so. I like. Yeah. Yeah. I use a little mix of both. I'm like such an appeaser. I just do a little bit of both. Like, the, you know, the more the merrier. Um, so I'm going to do like a tablespoon. Flower water. Mm -hmm. of each yeah any kind of flour or water that you have on hand um, and i never really put them in the at the beginning because i don't want them to burn off in the boil okay so i'm grinding here and i'm gonna drizzle about a half cup of my clarified butter in here so it's almost like a pie crust so i'm just like drizzling while it's blending i'm seeing it all kind of come together and then I'm gonna take about a half cup of my syrup that I just made and then drizzle that in there. We're gonna do it today. We're not gonna do it in the oven. We're, we're actually gonna um, do it on a like traditional style on a heating surface and see. Nice, yeah. So this will be a nice experiment. Because we're going direct on heat, we're gonna line our um, pans with some parchment paper. If you have parchment paper, I recommend this. It's mm -hmm. going to prevent sticking and burning. You'll get that nice caramelization. And then you can mm -hmm. kind of peel off the paper when you flip it. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's see here. I'm using a little spatula. And I'm going to just kind of get it equally distributed in these mm -hmm. two pie pans. All right. So with your hands, or with my hands, I'm sort of working it to kind of get a nice even layer. You don't have to worry about pushing it down just yet. You just want to get sort of a nice layer in there. I know. And I'm going to kind of use my hands to like really push it down. I'm like really packing it in there. Nice and packed. You can kind of use the back of a spoon to smooth it out. Mm -hmm. um, for those who don't know Arkawi, it's like a, a, it's a brined cheese. It's usually sort of transported in a salty brine, <laughs> really it. salty. So you kind of have it. to leach it of its salt. Um, so if you're thinking of making kanafe, you do have to prepare ahead of time, at least four hours or so, just Got to get it. that. So you're going to soak your cheese. And you can soak it a couple of times. Like I'll put hot water, leave it for two hours, pour the salty water out, put a new batch of water in, mm. pour mm. it out. So equal parts, I go cheese and ashta. If you don't have ashta, you can use a ricotta cheese. That's what I included cool. in the recipe. It's mm -hmm. really good. Kind of holds its shape, but you can see I'm sort of mixing these cheeses. 
has like a nice consistency to them. They're gonna melt really nicely too. Um, and then I like to put a little bit of lemon zest in my filling. Nice. Yeah. I'm gonna put about a cup in here. And this is kind of the consistency you should be going for. It's like firm enough where you know the cheese is gonna be good, but you can kind of smooth it out. Mushy it down. Spatula, spatula or the back of a spoon. Um, so if you're doing this on a flame, I would do like a medium heat. I wouldn't go too high because you can really burn huh. it. And the trick to this is just like the rotation. You can't keep it in one place at any given time. So Why? I'm gonna be uh, because if it stays on one spot, it's gonna burn your crust. Let's look okay. at it here. Okay, it's got a nice rise there. You can see it sort of doubled its shape. Um, and so what we're gonna do with this dough is actually cut it into I'd say eight pieces. Um, so we're gonna shape this dough again. We're gonna create more more structure for the dough. So the first part was what we call a bulk ferment. This part is we're, we're shaping and we're rounding the dough. So the process of shaping the dough, what I like to say sort of for beginners is you're going to tuck the dough under itself. You can see the bottom here and then place it down. Doing that same tucking, tucking method into the surface. Getting nice round balls. We're good to go with the dough. We're gonna, I rounded them. So now by the by the act of rounding them, I tighten them up again. So they got tampered with. Got so okay. we're gonna let them chillax for a second uh, while we check up on our kanafe here. Mm -hmm. Just keep rotating it. I can see sort of the, the cheese is melting on the sides. So we're getting that nice cheesy gooeyness. All right, let's see. I'm going to throw this into the oven. You mm. want to have flour on hand for working your dough. Mm -hmm. so I just kind of dust my surface here. And um, what the flour is going to help you do is when you roll it, it will create tension between the rolling pin and the dough. All right, so the first one, I'm going to take a rolling pin. Um, we're going to create 10 inch round. So I'm rolling one way, coming down. And then I'm rotating it this way and rolling up and rolling down. And nice, then simple. I'm rotating it again and then I'm flipping a little bit more flour, rolling up, rolling down. And then I'm rotating and flipping and rolling up and rolling down. If you feel so inclined, you can kind of use your hands to stretch this dough. Um, but it's okay to use the rolling pin to go out to the to 10 inches, but I like to kind of use my knuckles. And again, if you want to go pro, you can kind of use your hands to stretch. Oh, she's been making the, the pizza. Uh, this is the sage bread with the shrek. That's amazing. Yeah. Stretch it out to 10. Flatbread needs high heat. Um, and most sort of home ovens only get up to less than 500 degrees, right? If that, if it's a new one and it's nice. So you can cheat by either putting an inverted sheet pan in your oven mm -hmm. and letting the heat basically like uh, live in here. So in it the kind of create that crust. Or you can yeah. get a pizza stone. We have a pizza stone in my oven right now um, to kind of help create that effect. Um, but you want to build your manusha on an inverted sheet tray if you're using one. You don't want to put it mm -hmm. in the other side of the tray because um, you create steam. You don't want to create steam. Mm -hmm. So we're basically mimicking a wood, uh, like a pizza oven, a high heat. And then you want to put your oven all the way to 500. Let your pizza stone or your your other sort of uh, sheet tray live in there uh, at least 45 minutes to an hour. 
Um, I'm gonna mix a little bit of olive oil and za'atar, kind of using the back of your spoon. So you can see I like, I'm using my inverted sheet tray as a pizza peel. <laughs> nice. Yeah, why yeah, not? Yeah, so I'm gonna just like... Palestinian it innovation. Yes, exactly. Baker innovation. And I just slid it off onto my pizza stone. So I'm gonna give that about three to five minutes. I would say not more than that if your oven is properly heated. Um, lunch is served. Stop it. Ma'albek, this looks delicious. There you go. <laughs> Zatar and Kanafa for you. Cool. Thank you for, um, you know, <clears throat> making not only one of my favorite dishes, but also one that now I'm actually upset that it's nighttime and I can't have it for brunch and I'm not there, but it looks <laughs> really good.